By the way, speaking of health, I, something has come across the human affairs desk, Brian. So I thought I'd bring this up now on, on the, the first show after we heard about it. Ken Cantrell. He's having an affair? No. What? With who? You? Ken, human affairs. He, who is he having an affair with? Ken Cantrell. The human affairs desk. With a human. That's, that's what that's what like my uncle Dink down at WHOP radio in Hopkinsville. He used to send the the, the shout outs to the sick and the shut ins. Well, Ken Cantrell, our old friend in Paintsville, Kentucky, is feeling puny, as Christine Jarrett used to say. And and he's he's going to the doctor and, and we wanted to wish him good 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 health. Get well soon. Good wishes, whatever I'm trying to say. I'm still under the influence. Uh, you know, and, and Ken, uh, one of the early tape traders, I mean, going all the way back to the first home VCRs, practically, massive wrestling collector, sponsor of the wrestling events in Paintsville over the over the years, and an accomplishment. He was on the Paintsville Volunteer Fire Department for years, despite being a convicted arsonist. How about that? He's a convicted. Oh, why would you say this about this poor man? He's already having an affair. Now you're already saying no, that no, that, fires. That's, Him and that's his mistress what, starting fires all over the place. What, no, Lisa and he have been married for a number of years now. They're very devoted. But no, that's what I used to say about him on the promos. When Smoky Mountain would come to Paintsville, the sponsors were the volunteer fire department. And I would be running down what a crummy town it was. And I'd say even... That no good Ken Cantrell on the volunteer fire department, he's a convicted arsonist. And people around town would, would start, hey, Ken, you're an arsonist. But anyway, I hope he feels better soon because we need... That's something you want to hear around town? Well, you know, they were in, in, a, in, in a jocular fashion, they were, they were saying those things. But anyway, feel better, Ken. Feel better. You know, years ago in the 90s when you had no time, I was trying to get my hands on some early Freebird stuff, and I asked you who I should talk to. And you said, well, I have everything, but I don't have the time. Ken Cantrell yes. would have it, because he was a major Freebirds fan, and I got in touch with him, and he had all the early Georgia stuff, compilations of it, great stuff, and a really nice guy, so hopefully he gets better. Uh, well, he can't get any worse. Well, feel better, I guess. Feel better. Yeah, Ken. no, he's... <laughs> I understand they're going in, they're going to have to re do surgery and remove his head out of his ass, and he'll be fine. And I hope your wife doesn't find out about the affair. Or the fire. Oh, come on now. The fire and the affair. That's a good Would it book. have been better if I'd have said human relations uh, desk? Um, and also some news from here in Kentucky. And by the way, what did I say about that I-75 shooter down there in Laurel County? that uh, was, was, he was in the Daniel Boone National Forest on foot and they hadn't found him in like 10 or 11 days or whatever, however long it was. I said, there is no way, because he abandoned his car apparently and he may have had guns, but he abandoned the, at least the big one he was using. And one would imagine it, at that kind of getaway, he, was, he wasn't prepared for, living in the woods, but nevertheless, I said, unless he popped up in the next couple of days trying to get the fuck out of town, he's up there, he's shot himself, or he's fallen in a ravine or whatever. <laughs> and son of a gun, what? What are you laughing? You said it so much more concisely and completely right. You're like, oh, he's dead in the woods. Like, yeah. You just said it like it was a fact, like you may have done it. No, I didn't have anything to do with it. I wasn't even there. But, uh, but apparently some... Fucking now listen to this. They've had law enforcement teams, state police, local officials. I don't know who all they got apparently combing these. God, I don't know how you might want to Google how big the Daniel Boone National Forest is for fuck's sake. Yeah, a hundred thousand acres, whatever. It, and they needed to use machetes, right? To get in there. And these, this couple, I guess, who were live streaming on their fucking cell phone were wandering around in the woods. Oh, look, there he is. The but now they did the DNA test and they said it's inconclusive. You found a fucking guy dead 
He's been dead for a little bit less than the time, and they've been looking for this fucking guy. In the middle of goddamn Daniel Boone National Forest, nobody else has been reported missing. How can the DNA be inconclusive? He had a note on him that said, it's not me. <laughs> well, there you go. A deathbed denial. By the way, the Daniel Boone National Forest includes 708,000 acres of federally owned land within a 2,100,000 acre proclamation boundary. The name of the forest was changed in 1966 to honor Daniel Boone. Well, there you go. So that's a big ass place to be looking around or a big ass place to be out on foot in. If you're not highly prepared, this guy apparently wasn't Rambo. Do you remember what the original name was of the forest? I do not. The Cumberland National Forest. Okay, that makes sense, because it encompasses the area of the Cumberland Gap, which, as every small schoolchild knows, is the path that Daniel Boone took to blaze the trail into old Kentuck. Well, we've spoken about Ken Cantrell and Ken Tuck. This is Here, I've, I've got another so far. I got another Ken Tucky uh, <laughs> piece of news. Okay. Now, now that they've, they've calmed the I-75 shooter down, did you hear what happened down in Letcher County? Letcher County? I've never even heard of Letcher County. Letcher County, that's all the way down there. It's either, it's, I think it's on the border of Western Virginia, right there near the corner of West Virginia. But apparently, the judge just got shot by the sheriff inside the courthouse in his own chambers. Boom! Graveyard dead. Sheriff being charged with first-degree murder. They had an argument, is the only details they've been able to come up with. But the, they did announce there's no threat to the public. Now that the sheriff is in jail because he's a murderer, I guess. They didn't finish that sentence, but... Can you believe that? He's going to be waiting for trial for a long time. They have to find a new judge. Yeah. Fuck. Is this some Hatfield and McCoy shit? I'm telling you, that, that's the, uh, down there in Eastern Kentucky. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're fun that way. Yeah, that's right. And in, in your part of Kentucky, the police just shoot the civilians, not the court staff. For heaven's sake. But uh, what's going on up here in New Jersey, Brian? Everything's nice and, uh, and normal up here. You got no sheriffs murdering people. You've got no highway well, shooters. You've got no... There was a big no thing this past week because uh, one of the two-lane areas was closed down for repaving. They repaved all the roads to make everything nice and smooth, but it caused some traffic for a day or two, so yeah. a lot of people were up in arms. Well, that's terrible. Well, they ought to be up in other people's arms. It would be difficult to hold yourself up with your arms. I sound like Groucho Marx now. Yeah, my gardener no-showed for a week because of it. He said, I can't get to your house. And damn his eyes. The gardener's next door. How come he got to that house? Well, he got in before they stopped everyone. Well, whatever. So that's well, the exciting world of New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen. They close our fucking bridges here all the time for with almost no notice back and forth. That's a You're, you're just talking about minor inconveniences. You know what a minor inconvenience is going to be, Brian? Uh, no, I, <laughs> I do not know this. No, a minor inconvenience is going to be if you don't take advantage, you being the royal you out there in podcast land of the big holiday sale at Jim beginning Saturday, October 5th at noon Eastern. If you don't take advantage of that, that's going to be a minor inconvenience. And the longer you wait, the bigger it's going to be until finally around about Thanksgiving time, panic is going to set in. You're going to be running around. Like a chicken with its head cut off. Your head's going to be on fire. You're going to be all screaming in the streets. Oh, my God. So don't wait until you work yourself up into a frenzy like that and jump in right at the start. As I've mentioned, the brand new and final Jim Cornette action figure variant will go on sale. If you go to jimcornette.com right now, you can see a photo and get all the information right on the front page there. There's a big banner, the man in white. Not And somebody has already tweeted to me that I do go perfectly with both of the Midnight Express action figure sets or the heavenly body set in this white outfit with white tennis racket, black shirt, and red tie. You can also customize any color in my rainbow wardrobe for you customizers out there. And... 
as we mentioned, the best thing of all because of Hotchkiss Feather Bottoms concept that he calls a sale, where you get a product for less than its normal retail price, it's going to sweep the marketing world. If you buy any of the Midnight Express or Heavenly Bodies tag team sets or four pack, you get the final Jim Cornette variant at only half price, $24.95, and they come autographed. I'm telling you, Featherbottom is outdoing himself, Brian. You scoff, but he's got a lot of marketing yeah, ideas. I, I, there's a lot I'm scoffing at. And of course, we're burying the lead here, ladies and gentlemen. These are the first Jim Cornette action figures. You can get a Sharpie and you could draw all over and write the worst things possible. Oh, come on about now. Jim Cornette. You could point right to his face and say things and then point right up to the person you're talking about. Or maybe you're just on drugs and you want psychedelic Jim Cornette. This is your only chance to make a tie-dyed jacket for a Jim Cornette figure. Well, and you're going to And then get write, this... kick me, and this guy's a dick. You were saying that on the last show, and you're going to get this to be a thing here where people are drawing phallic symbols, reaching upon my face, and, and, and saying nasty things about me. And, and I, I absolutely forbid anybody to get one of these white action figures, especially at half price if you buy one of the tag team sets, and do dirty things to it and, and, then, and then tweet pictures of it or whatever. I forbid you to do those and things. And if they're half price, get two. It's the price of one. And then you could also fuck with the face. Facial oh. hair. <laughs> fuck with the glasses. Do all sorts of dyed hair. Maybe weasel hair. Who knows? You could do anything you want. This is your chance to fuck Jim up for a good cause. What was the cause? There is. There's no reason. Well, there's no there's reason no needed. There's reason. no reason needed, ladies and gentlemen. You've been waiting years since seeing this guy yell at you about Yokozuna to write fuck you on his own action figure. This is your chance. There is no cause or reason to be doing all these things that you're talking about. And also... I'll have you know the thank you, fuck you, buy t-shirt after a couple of years on hiatus is coming back for the Christmas season for a limited time only. You can get those also. And all the other fine products and merchandise and collectibles and DVDs and books and pictures and cult of Cornette gift certificates and more. Saturday, October 5th, noon Eastern is the time when the, the big final variant goes on sale as well as the t-shirts in addition to all our other stuff. And, and do not. Do not make me look like a Bret Hart caricature on a chalkboard in the middle of a goddamn rec center somewhere in Scranton. He used to be quite profane with some of the cartoons he would do of people. I still have one that Lawler did of me one time. We gotta what? Send, we got to send him a couple of these figures to draw on. Well, that's, that's all right. He's, he's doing well. He can buy them at half price. Uh, but Lawler did a caricature of me one time. We're sitting in a locker room in Evansville. There's nothing to do. Obviously, there's no internet, cell phones, all that stuff, and it's Evansville, right? He said, hey, let me draw you. He's got a fucking napkin from the uh, concession stand. He's got a big ballpoint pen. He said, let me draw you. He said, hold still for a second. He did like two minutes. He does this thing on his napkin. I can't see it, but I'm sitting there. And he said, okay, I'm finished. You know he's, he, what an artist he is. And he turns around and he's drawn a perfect caricature of my hair and head and glasses and nose. And then I have a giant dick and balls hanging underneath <laughs> with, oh. a, with a, a, a jacket and a, and a shirt and a tie on the, underneath the scrotum. It, it was so artistic, I framed it and kept it to this day. Oh, that Lawler. Well, that crazy kid. Anyway, what do you got going on here? Uh, there's not a lot going on. They recently repaved the road, and uh, there was a lot I of traffic. I think you mentioned that. I'm talking about on your program we're supposed to be doing here. I'm the, supposed to be the one that's out of it and have no energy. People were up in arms. That's what I'm talking about.